Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this cool photo film flash effect looking thing. I don't know what you wanna call it. I just know that it looks cool and it's really simple to do. And I don't think I should gatekeep the idea because I've used it in a few like music videos, if you would. I've used it in a few faster paced edits and I, and I felt like it kind of made a nice transition between some hard cuts that were rather unpleasant to look at otherwise. So let's hop right into it. Now, it does depend on what software you're in as to what tools you'll have to your disposal, but I'm gonna generally assume that most editing softwares have the same effects to some extent. We're here, we're in Premiere Pro. I have a sequence I've already edited to the beat of some music that I'm going to go ahead and export a few still frames from to do this effect. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and choose a shot we want to transition from. I think this one to that one might be a good transition. Press down, go to the end of that frame. Go one, two, three. I like that shot, so let's go ahead and export frame right here. Now, you can name this however you want. I'm gonna leave it the way it is. I'm gonna go ahead and choose a frame farther back. Let's say here, I'm gonna choose that frame, right? All we're doing is just choosing a few frames we wanna have from this shot and a few frames we wanna have from this shot. So let's go ahead and assume I want this shot, for instance. Press export frame, okay. And then maybe I'll do one like this. That's, that one's fine. Export frame, okay. If you don't know where this button is and you're like, dude, you didn't tell me where to find the export frame button, press the plus button. You'll have your button editor pop up. In the button editor, you'll see this little camera in Premiere Pro at least called export frame. It's also shift E. So click and drag it wherever you want. That being said, I already have one, so I'm not going to do that. But drag it into your toolbar there and you're good to go. You'll have it there until you want to not have it there. Now, I've gone ahead and made this photos folder. And let's go ahead and drag these photos into our sequence here, down into our project panel folder, and we're good to go. So now we know that we went ahead and we grabbed these two shots, and we grabbed these two shots. Now these ones look similar. I'm not sure if I accidentally grabbed an old one, so I'm gonna go ahead and just delete. Now we have two, and we have two, which is, which is four, math. Okay, so now you have your photos in here, you have your timeline here. We wanna go ahead and add the photos right over top of this transition point from there to there. Well, let's take that first photo, just this first frame here, and we'll go over to the point where that first video clip goes into the second video clip, this point of transition right here. I'm gonna go ahead, choose the beginning of the photo, and I want like six or seven frames out of this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cut on that seven frame, everything after that I can delete. Then I wanna drag this back to a point where I can add, let's say another one here, except I don't want this one to be the same photo. I wanna bring in the other photo. Drag it in place, delete that, drag it next to it. And I want to alternate these just for some variety so they don't constantly look the same. Now, it's a good idea to keep them all the same length in terms of how many frames each photo will be, just because when you do the effect to one of them, you can just copy that effect and paste it to the rest of them, and you'll get the exact same look consistently across there, and also the timing will be correct. But it also saves you some time. So again, I recommend keeping them all the same length. That being said, here we are. We have each photo. There's that photo. There's this photo. That photo again, this photo again. What can we go ahead and do? Well, first off, I want to go ahead and make them look like film. So let's go ahead and add an adjustment layer, which I've already done here. Drag that adjustment layer on top. I'm gonna delete this section because I don't need it. I'm gonna go to the color panel, push a little bit towards purple, or actually a little towards green, a little towards the orange, just to get that contrast there a little bit. Go to creative, I'm gonna fade that film up to, I don't know, 40-ish, sharpen. Maybe we'll add a little bit of sharpening, right? So this is before, that's after. Let's go ahead and contrast it up a lot. Knock the highlights, knock the shadows. Maybe push the whites up, bring the blacks up a little bit. And then color was a match. I kind of want to just make it feel like a standard film look. I'm not going to go for a particular one. Just kind of like when you look at film and you think of film, what do you think of? This is at least what I think of. You can go ahead and color it the way you want to. But uh, I want to I want to push towards the uh, magentas with the midtones. The shadows I kind of want to bring to blues. And highlights I kind of want to bring to yellows. Now I'd say from there to here, we're slightly more film-like. Let's go ahead and add a curve. And on this curve, let's knock the whites. That's an important step. And knock the blacks by bringing those up. So now, before, after, before that, after that. This is what I'm gonna go with. Now, we are missing something else, and that would be grain. Now, we don't have a grain effect in Premiere Pro. We have a noise effect. So, noise, let's type in noise. Find it here. Noise and grain. Quick noise, drag it onto there. Go to effect controls noise again now let's go ahead and add like 25. now if we turn this off this is a four this is after i'm good with that it works for my situation now i want to go ahead and add that final touch to make this effect really 
click, right? And what is that? That would be adding borders or overlays. Now, uh, I've gone ahead and I've made a folder called VFX and I've added a square film frame that I'm gonna throw on top of this. You can see that it doesn't fit the length of this. And if you don't know where to get this, that's where today's sponsor comes into play, which is Motion Array. Motion Array is an online library full of video templates, motion graphics, presets, plugins for different softwares, tools for video editing, anything you could possibly need to make your videos a little bit better or have an easier way to edit. Motion Array at least can help you on the road to get there. That being said, rather than just keep talking about what Motion Array is, I'm gonna go ahead and find a film frame on here. here so. Film frame, let's type in film frame to all categories in the search bar. And if you scroll down, or if you go over here and you find graphics, for instance, I wanna to go to graphics, I'll press see all, and we'll, we'll scroll through here to find a film frame that works for us. Let's assume I wanted this one again. All you do is press download, it goes up here, it'll download, you choose where you want it to save to. I've already gone ahead and saved it. So now let's go back in Premiere Pro. This is the film frame that I just downloaded from Motion Array. So click and drag it on top of all your footage. Again, you just line it up, cut it to length, there you go. Now you'll notice, okay, it doesn't fit the video clip and that's okay, we're gonna make that work. Go to effect controls, go to scale, press the drop down, press uniform scale, turn that off. Now let's change the scale width and 178 looks proper for me. Now, yeah, it's stretched a little bit, sure. Do I care? Also no. Now that I've done this and I have my adjustment layer also applied, click, click, cut all these. Now go back to the first one, right click after you select them all, press nest, let's name that one, just for the sake of having things be a little easier to monitor. Go ahead and do the same thing with the rest of them. Perfect, so now we have one, two, three, and four. Let's go ahead and actually do the final effect that gives it that transition look. Go to the beginning of the clip, go to effects, search for directional blur. Now double tap that or drag it onto your footage. I'm just gonna double select it. Now go ahead and keyframe blur length. Let's go ahead and bring that up to like 150. Now keyframe in maybe one, two frames, go back down to zero. And now you can either press this, Command C, go over here, Command V it, or you can just click Alt, click and drag, copy that, click Alt, click and drag and copy that one. And now you have this type of transition here. So if we play it, and now that we have this effect, go ahead, select it, Command C, select the rest of these, Command V, and now because they're all the same length, once again, it will apply evenly across them all. So let's go ahead and watch this back. I don't play the field, I hear my doggy from the sky. Something like that is, I think, more fitting than what we just had. So if you guys want to get $50 off of an annual subscription to Motion Array, you guys can press the top link in the description. It's my link. You can use it. Go to the website, sign up, get that $50 off, and save yourself some money and support the channel at the same time. So if you guys want to do that, be sure to go do that top link in the description. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching the video. I appreciate you being here. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching again. Goodbye.